Well, speaking of misogynists, I woke up this morning to a very interesting tweet from a men's rights activist, Michael. <laughs> okay. um, so, as you... Okay. As listeners of this show might recall, on the previous Matt and Michael Monday show, I covered the men's rights, con- the first annual, excuse me, men's rights conference, where a bunch of sad men got together, and instead of bringing up valid points, they attacked feminism and women in general. And I just really briefly uh, told them to man up. Yes. And it seems like they may have heard you. Because this morning I woke up and someone sent me a link to the website A Voice for Men, which is, well, they call themselves the leading website for men's rights activists and the men's rights movement. They are the ones who actually put together the first annual men's rights conference that took place last weekend. And the article I was sent to has the headline, A Challenge to Matt Binder. (laughs) Now, for those of you who are not familiar, that is me. I am Matt Binder. It seems like they saw my segment where I covered the first annual men's rights uh, conference. And they are none too happy with my coverage of said event. Paul Ellum who is the founder of A Voice for Men, had this to say. Okay, I am going to have to start by saying I have never heard of the guy. Someone in the comments of my YouTube channel put a link to the following video where Matt sets about what he imagines is a pawning, P-W-N-I-N-G, which is the nerd way of writing owning if you are a 12-year-old Call of Duty player, uh, of A Voice for Men's conference on men's issues. Yes, it was lame. Yes, he mispronounced virtually everyone's name he mentioned. And yes, he really thought he was making good points, even as he fumble-fucked his way through a subject he did not understand. He was like Chris Gethard, sends the Coke bottle glasses, and even less funny. Which I say- take as a compliment. I mean, you're basically saying I am not as funny as a very funny comedian, so I guess I'm sort of funny? I mean, I'm going to steal fumble-fucked. Yeah. I'll again, give him that. Again, another someone, another another phrase someone who drinks gamer fuel and plays Call of Duty probably uses. Um, <laughs> then he maybe con- I won't steal it. <laughs> he continues, "Okay, Matt, you've barely you're barely marginal in an unchallenged environment where you are free to misrepresent, lie, twist, distort, mock, parrot, and commit other forms of intellectual flatulence just so you can appeal to women who live with seven or more cats. Excuse you, Paul. <laughs> Excuse you. I don't consider women unless they have a minimum of ten cats. Excuse you. How do you think you would do in a real live debate where there is more of a response to what you have to say than you laughing at your own unfunny shit? (laughs) You made a lot of statements about what you think is the weakness of the men and apparently the women of A Voice for Men. How dare those women who are part of A Voice for Men speak up, though? That's what I'm questioning. That's what I'm saying. That implies some sort of strength on your part. Certainly does, buddy. Certainly does. You are being offered a chance to prove it. Oh, boy. I will predict to my readers that the response to this will be either a mocking rejection. Well, mocking truly is, you got that part right. Rejection, we'll see. Or crickets. Ooh. This is generally how feminist quizlings roll. So I really just wanted to get this on record. It's another example that underneath every yapping yapping feminist chihuahua sycophant is a yapping feminist chihuahua sycophant. Ooh. Mm. Wow! I fancy myself more of a yapping feminist shih tzu, excuse you. No, I think you're more of a chihuahua. <laughs> As I listen to this guy, he and I've not heard though. this before, I just have to say, sounds to me like somebody called 
got called short by their wife. Oh, by yes. By their ex-wife. Yes, it does sound like that to me. He goes on to say that if uh, I don't want to debate another male, <laughs> that there's other options for me. <laughs> and he proceeds to go through the other voice from the, the women's uh, B team, I guess you would call them, of a voice for men. Because the A team is clearly men. The, the B team? They have to be. B team. B team. I mean. Okay. What? Uh, nothing. I was just thinking of what, what a B word that these guys were oh, throw around. Oh, I didn't even think yeah. of that. Maybe that is why. Yeah. Um, but then he goes that if Ma- – now, Matt, if for whatever reason you would like to do this, the only condition applied to the offer is equal time with you shutting the fuck up when it is not your turn to speak. <laughs> oh, my God. Is this Walter Block? Is this Walter Block? Yeah, I know. Hey, 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 hey. It's my turn now. I will do the same. <laughs> up to you, Maddie. But I am betting on the crickets. Well, Paul, crickets you shall not get. Because I accept your challenge, and I accept the original challenge of debating a man. And while the level of testosterone you have may be frightening to me, I accept. And I will bring the maximum amount of testicular fortitude I can muster up in my small-framed feminist body. (laughs) My Coke bottled glasses, non wearing, even less funny Chris, Chris Gethard body. <laughs> and I accept your challenge, buddy. And I will attempt to give you equal time as long as you're not boring as shit, because after all, it has to be entertaining, because this is an audio show in the podcast or live radio format. And it could get very boring if you just yap on forever without any interruption. Spouting out MRA platitudes and ideology. You name the time and place, buddy. Let's do this. Well, the time and place is obviously the majority of yeah, Monday's 12 noon. 